There are a lot of really cool things you can do with Unity's built-in hinge joint component. From pressure levers to trap doors, from spinning fiery death sticks of death to chain platforms, rooted trees, and yes, even catapults. This is a powerful component with a lot of possibilities. In this first tutorial, we're going to look at how this hinge joint works and how you can make things like trap doors and pressure levers without needing any code at all. Let's get started. So first off, you're going to need a player in your scene who's able to move around and just some ground to walk on. At that point, you're going to want to add in some sort of a platform. I'm just going to click and drag this one into my scene. And it's just a little larger than I'd like it, so I might just scale it down a tiny bit. There we go. All we need to do with this is add a box collider, first of all, so that our platform actually has some boundaries. And I'm just going to toggle on my gizmos here. And then also add a hinge joint 2D. On the hinge joint 2D, there's quite a bit going on here, but the first and most important thing is the actual limit here in the corner. This is where we can anchor our hinge, and so you can see it's in the bottom right. And so as soon as I hit play, you'll see that it hinges on that point. If you want to, you can click and drag that to different parts of the platform. Placing it right in the center allows you to create a neat little seesaw, which is kind of fun. And in fact, there's actually two circles here. So if I were to take off the auto configure, I could actually grab the inside and outside circle and move them to different po points. Now, I actually don't find this particularly useful. I'll show you what I mean here. So if I move the outer circle to the right and the inner circle to the left here, when I play the game, the entire shape actually just shifts over to where that far limit was, and then it still pivots from the right. So when you play the game, the whole shape will go to this spot, um, but still pivot from there. So I find that keeping them together in most cases is just the way to go. Now, one of the really cool features with this here is the motor. And so let's take a look at that. There's two factors here, the speed of your motor, but also the amount of force that you would like the motor to have. So for example, if I put my force down to 10 and move my motor speed up to, let's make it 20. And this is just 20 degrees per second. So this is gonna be a very slow moving motor. Now, when I get in the game, I'll click the use motor on and you'll see that it is slowly 20 degrees per second, making its way upwards. All you need to do now is add a fireball animation and some damage dealing and you would have a moving fireball stick of death. And if I make that motor speed negative, I can get my fireball stick moving in the opposite direction. Now, if I wanted to make this positive again, you'll notice that because my motor force is only 20, if my player jumps on it, he can easily overpower the object. And if we want to, we can really have some fun with this. While the motor's off, I'm gonna set my motor speed to like 10,000. And let's set my motor force to 100,000. Sorry, that's 1 million. And let's see what happens. All right, good times. <laughs> Now in my particular case, what I'd like to do here is create a trap door. And so I'm going to grab the platform and set it right here at the end. And for this, I'm going to want both of my anchors together. In fact, I'll just click the auto configure connect. And what I'm going to do right now is just quickly set mine so that it goes to, I'm going to go with about a motor speed of 100 degrees per second. So not too fast, but moving pretty quickly. And I'm going to make my force about 25. I'm just going to put my player over here. I'll test this in just a sec, but first of all, my player is set up so that he can only move and jump when he's standing on the ground. So I'm just gonna quickly grab the platform and make sure that it is tagged as ground. Now when I get into the game, I can turn the motor on. You'll notice it's coming up, but my player is able to interact with it in kind of fun ways so that it looks like it's up most of the time, but I'm able to knock it down. Now at the moment, we've got something going on here where the platform itself is colliding with the edge of the ledge here, and that's why it's locking where it is. And it's doing it in a bit of an awkward way. We don't necessarily want our platforms to be up at that sort of a weird angle. And so what we can actually do is move down to the next section here, which is the use limits section. What this allows us to do is just create a circle where the platform is actually able to rotate to. So I'm gonna start off here. I'm gonna make my 
lower angle, let's try negative 100. And I'm gonna make my upper angle zero. Turn that on. And you'll notice now that I've got this little section here where I cannot go. And so when it rotates up, it should stop when it gets to that point. The platform's down, I'll put that motor back on. And you'll notice now it's standing out quite nicely. Step on it and it drops down only to pop up afterwards. So, and so if we wanted to create a trap for the player, it looks like there's a platform there. But when you walk on it, it can drop down. Now that's a lousy trap with not a whole lot of power. Kind of fun for some platforming where you need to think quickly. But perhaps turn my motor force down to more like 10. Now when I walk on it, I drop off, you've got to move quick or you get trapped. And then once you're underneath it, the platform closes on you. It does have uh, rigid body actions so when you push it up and it bounces against the edge, it does rebound down a little bit. And just a couple of little quick tips at this point to help make this run extra well. Um, at some points you may run into issues with the platform coming disconnected on the hinge and also some weird um, bumping that can happen from underneath, that sort of thing. And so two quick fixes. First of all, you'll notice there's a box here for a connected rigid body. So if your hinge is actually connecting to another object that has a rigid body, you can put it into that box in order to secure it more securely. So in my case, I'm just going to click on my ground here and I'm using a composite collider which has a rigid body involved. And so, one more time going to my platform, I can actually grab my ground tiles, drag them in there, and it'll find the rigid body. And now my platform will be more securely attached to that object. And then the second thing that you can do is actually just take the edge here, your anchor, and slide it a little bit into the ledge itself so that rather than always rotating right on the side of your collider, you will be actually rotating based on the ledge itself. At this point, I might even actually grab the collider on my object and just move it a little bit back so that I've got some separation here. And if I don't want there to be a funny looking edge, I can move them back in. All right, with that done, I now have a better connected hinge that's less likely to run into issues and it's anchored quite nicely in the ledge itself. So beyond adding platforms that you have to act quickly or be tossed off of, as well as creating traps where the player, if he stands, too hard can get dropped down and then get, have it close on him. Another option is you can create puzzles and create situations where perhaps a platform is too strong for the player to knock down. However, if he were to push some sort of an object onto that platform, he could create enough to make it move downward in order to get passage beyond. All right, that's the basics of hinge joints. Next tutorial, we'll take a look at how to add some code in order to create a springboard or a trap that can launch the player like a catapult. Until next time, I'm Matt with Night Run Studio. Thanks so much for watching. And if you're enjoying the series, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. Cheers.